So this will be a winding, uh, rubber band winding and helicopter launching demonstration for 2020, uh, 21 Science Olympiad helicopter event. Um, for people that have experience in the event, this is a little bit too much information, but this will be helpful for s the people that are new. And people with experience with last year's airplane, you'll see that with the thicker rubber band for helicopter this year, some of the winding specifications are a little different. Um, so if you're new to this, uh, watch the video more than once to be sure you really understand every step. Um, one special note, handle the motors, rubber motors with care. Uh, don't drop them. If they drop on the floor and they get gritty, you want to wash them with mild soap and dry them and relubricate them. Um, a little bit of grit can cause the rubber motor to damage itself and possibly break. If you follow the instructions in this video, you should not be breaking rubber motors. So you can wind them aggressively without breaking. Uh, one really important factor is uh, the rubber band will be very tight as you're loading it on the helicopter. You don't want to lose your grip on the motor while you're loading it on the helicopter because the rubber motor can whip around then and grab the truss threads on the helicopter and crush the fuselage and destroy the helicopter. So if you feel like you're losing your grip on the rubber motor, it's best to just stop, rehook it onto the wind on the rehook it onto the torque meter and winder, unwind it and start over again. Or hook it back on and get your grip all over again. Um, if you feel like you're not your fingers aren't strong enough to hold the rubber motors well, you can have a little paper towel with a little alcohol on it or an alcohol wipe right next to your, your torque meter as you're winding. And you can clean and dry your fingers before you try to grab the rubber motor. All right, so this is winding the uh, motor and then launching the helicopter. All the specifications on the paper towel indicating the weight, density, uh, vintage, splice number uh, is written on the log. And you get the rubber motor out of your paper towel, put the paper towel next to the torque meter. It kind of helps uh, create a little space uh, to get the slippery motor something to kind of wipe itself off on. Um, drop the rubber motor into a sandwich Ziploc bag. Be sure it gets to the bottom of the bag. Get your lubricant, your armor all, shake it up maybe three squirts right into the bottom of the bag where the motor is. Massage the lubricant into the motor for just a few seconds. Drop it out on your paper towel. This is what the towel is standing for. You don't want to uh, have the motor completely dripping wet like it is now, so you can pat it twice or three times, and that's it. Then you want the knot of the motor to be on the side where the hook of the torque meter is. So you'll have an O-ring right next to the knot, and that O-ring will be hooked on the torque meter. Then the winder will hook on the other O-ring. And this is the very first use of the motor, so you'll see in your specification spreadsheet it can be stretched to four times its uh, relaxed length. So it's 21 inches long, that means you can stretch it to 84 inches, or about 7 feet. Um, this is, rubber is stiffer this year than normal. Usually we can stretch it 5 times. But I'm going to stretch it 7 feet. And then you'll see in the specification sheet that the very first time you wind a rubber motor, you're going to wind to 80% of the braking turns. Um, and at full stretch, you're going to wind to 60% of that 80%. So my objective is to wind this 96 winder turns and then uh, at full stretch. And then the remaining turns up to the 160 that are my target um, while I'm walking in. So I'm going to stop and talk about what I'm doing. Um, but normally you will never stop turning the crank of the winder. Once you start to wind, you should keep it going. If you stop and start while you are stretched out and walking in, then you'll find at the very end of your winding you have chains of knots poking out in all directions from the rubber motor. And chains of knots will drag on the motor stick of the helicopter 
and interfere with the unwinding of the motor. So you get very poor performance. So smooth winding, continuously turning the crank is important. So I'm going to put 96 winder turns on the rubber band, and then I'm going to stop and talk about what I do next. I actually put a hundred on. This motor felt a little softer. Um, you can stick with the specifications. So the torque value right now is 0.5 inch ounces. Um, you'll get used to reading the pointer on the torque meter from a distance away. The, the needle bounces on the torque meter. But while it's bouncing while you're winding, you can see like the midpoint of the bouncing area, and that's your reading. So as I put the remaining 60 winder turns onto the motor, I am watching the torque. It's not the turn count that matters, it's the torque. So the torque will build up gradually and then it'll start to build up really fast. So I'm going to let the torque build up gradually while I put more turns in. And I'm going to read off to you what the torque value is at each stage. So I'm counting turns, but I'm going to say the torque value. All right. Point six. Point seven. Point eight. One point oh. One point two. One point four. So for, I put on the chart that if you're less experienced and less confident, you can uh, wind up to 1.2. You can see I walked in based on the torque. I'm trying to keep the torque increasing smoothly. You don't want the torque to suddenly increase because that will break the motor. Taking a step in lets the torque decrease. I also was winding slower towards the end because torque increases rapidly as the motor is fully wound. And if you slow down the speed of the winder crank, then it will increase less rapidly so you can control it better. So I finished winding the motor and it's 12 inches long. That's very important. So I took the last turn of the crank right as the motor got to be about 12 inches long. Then you don't let the motor get smaller and bigger and smaller and bigger while you're doing the process of loading it on the helicopter. If you let it go in and out and in and out, it also will create knot chains. I keep it at 12 inches the whole time. So for your first flights, I'm suggesting you can take five back off turns. Um, for a more experienced flyer, you could do two, but I would suggest everyone do at least five back off turns for the first time. Um, because then you can get used to handling the motor with less torque on it. So at this point I have 160 winder turns, I'm writing that on my blog. And then back off turns, I'm going to do two back off turns, you're going to do five for your first light or two or three. So I'm going to do one, two. And that reduced the torque to 0.78. It would have been in the mid point eights, but I've been standing here talking. So that uh, some torque bled off while I was standing here. So I'm writing that down. I have two back off turns. My launch torque is 0.78. So if you could bring the camera around here mm -hmm. and kind of zero in on the rubber band. So I have the winder in my left hand now. You notice how I have it threaded through my fingers um, to get a good grip on it. I'm not holding it like this because mm -hmm. if you lose control over it you can break your torque meter. So I'm holding it like this. I'm keeping the crank from turning. So I'm going to load the motor onto the uh, front hook of the helicopter first. Step one is I take my right hand and I grab the entire winder. Step two is I grab behind the O-ring on the rubber band so that the whole O-ring is showing. Don't grab the O-ring, grab behind the O-ring. 
and then I slip it off the hook, gripping very tightly, no fingernails, just pads of the finger. Then the O-ring is fully exposed and it's easy to hook onto the hook. I'm holding pretty tight. When I pick up the helicopter, I'm going to hold it by the strong part of the fuselage with my fingers circling the rotor. You can't grab the rotor. The rotor is not strong enough to grab. I'm grabbing the fuselage. And actually my hook is not down correctly. The hook is pointing down, which would be difficult to see. But it's the hook is available so that I can attach the O-ring to it. If it's not available, then you can set the helicopter down and spin the rotor 180 degrees. So I'm going to keep the rotor about almost parallel to the motor. I'm always watching this rear rotor to make sure I don't snag it on the table or, or uh, catch it on the torque meter. That would break it. So I have it at a slight angle to keep it away from the torque meter. And I'm going to hook the O-ring onto the front hook and very, make sure it's on the point of the hook and gently let go of the motor. The next step is I'm going to get, do the same thing grabbing behind the O-ring um, uh, near the torque meter. And it, usually you have to slide the O-ring off of the point of the hook. And you can see I'm holding another finger behind the torque meter to make it a little bit easier to slide everything off. So the whole O-ring is exposed. Then I attach it to the rear hook. And I make sure it's thoroughly on the rear hook before I let go. And if you did a smooth winding job, then you'll see that the rubber band has knot chains, but all the knot chains are almost the same size. There's no chains poking out in different directions. So launching the helicopter, you are basically going to keep the hold you have on it now, and you're going to let go of the top rotor, swinging that hand out of the way, and you're going to be holding the bottom of the fuselage and let go of the bottom of the fuselage once your top hand is out of the way. So I think I, yeah, I'm going to demonstrate it that way. I have another way to do it, but it's trickier. Okay, so we're going to launch the helicopter and time it. So launching the helicopter in the middle of the space away from obstructions. Unfortunately, I have a speeder grade in the middle of my space, but um, the worst obstruction is the wall. When they, the helicopters hit the wall, they, they slide right down it, and that ends the flight. So I'm going to let go with the top rotor, hand out of the way, and then launch it. So the hand sweeps out of the way, and the other hand lets go of it. And this is because it's the first flight on the new rubber band. What I'm hoping for is about a minute 40. We'll just video it to see what it does. So um, I think I noted in the email that I sent out that a rubber motor can be wound fully like that, up to 1.4 inch ounces, um, maybe four or five times. And the first flight, the rubber band is stiff, um, and it gives you a pretty good flight time. The second flight, the flight time will be better. The third flight, it's usually better again, because you can get more turns onto the third flight. I'm going to hit the burner straight. There it goes. Oh well. So you can see what happens when the helicopter hits things. There. So it's stable again. So it should stay on the ceiling for close to a minute and 15, minute 20, minute 30, and then start to kind of loosen up. And unfortunately, I have a rough plaster ceiling. So every time the rotor ticks the ceiling, it shifts over. So you can hear it ticking. And if it gets to the wall, that means I'm going to have a flight that comes straight down. And maybe we'll get lucky and it'll come back to the middle. Yeah, that's hitting the wall. That's bad. So that's the end of the flight. So uh, when the helicopter lands on the floor, you want to pick it up the same way that you were holding it when you got it off of the, when you loaded the motor and when you launched it. You want to put your fingers around the rotor and grab the fuselage. Around the rotor and grab the fuselage. And you do not want the rubber band to unwind. If the rubber band unwinds and you let the rotor spin, 
the rubber band will get loose and flap around and it will go around the truss threads and destroy the fuselage. So you have to remove the motor by leaving it still partially wound and hooking it back onto the torque meter. So I'm going to go over to the torque meter. And I'm going to uh, do the reverse set of steps to putting the motor onto the, fuse, onto the helicopter. I'm going to remove it off the rear hook. So if the O-ring is twisted around the hook, you have to kind of untwist a little with your fingers and get the O-ring so that it's easy to remove. And then you're going to hook the O-ring onto the torque meter. And then you keep the helicopter roughly parallel to the um, rubber band and roughly parallel to the torque meter. You don't want it way up here because it could come unhooked from the torque meter and then the rubber band would get would smash against the helicopter. And then in this case I don't have the hook facing down so I'm holding the fuselage with one hand facing the hook down and I'm removing the um, o-ring from the front hook. And then you notice that I have the helicopter set on a completely different table from the uh, torque meter and the winding. The reason for that is if the helicopter was sitting next to the torque meter while I'm winding and the rubber band broke, the rubber band kind of lashes back and forth uh, when it breaks and it shoots from your winder back to the torque meter. And if the helicopter was sitting here, the rubber band could still hit it and damage it. If you have a long table, you could have the torque meter here and you can have the helicopter here. They should be about four feet apart at a minimum. Um, since my table is cluttered, I have the helicopter on a separate table. So the reason that you uh, remove the rubber band uh, from the helicopter with turn still on it is partly to protect the helicopter and it's partly so that you can count what's called turns remaining. So there's still turns remaining in this rubber band and I'm going to count them while I wind backwards. So. So that's 58 winder turns remaining, and I record that. There's a column for that. So I record winder turns. That's 58, 15 to 1 ratio, so it's 58 times 15. So I know that's a high number to have remaining, and the reason there's a high number remaining is because the helicopter hit the wall and slid and didn't get to finish its flight. So then you can make a note in your comments that the flight time was poor because there was a wall slide at roughly a minute 20, it slid straight to the floor. So then you know that data point isn't valid for an uh, analysis later. So that's removing the rubber band, picking the helicopter up after it lands, removing the rubber band with turns still on it, hooking it on the torque meter, and counting the turns remaining by winding backwards. Um, the other thing I did that I didn't explain was when I picked the helicopter off of, up off of a carpet, lift it very slowly because sometimes the ends of the carbon rods are poked into a little loop of carpet weave and if you lift it quickly you could break something. So really this was in some of the earlier videos. Everything you do should be in slow motion. When I pick the helicopter up I move slowly. When I bring it towards the torque meter I move slowly so that if I accidentally catch it on this post or I bump it against the uh, table I catch myself doing it before I break it because I'm moving slowly. So that's the whole process. Have fun, read all the material, and you should have really long helicopter flights.